The information provided by Taming Lightning is designed to provide helpful information and to educate on the subjects discussed. The information provided is true and complete to the best of our knowledge and is not intended to be used without professional guidance and supervision. All recommendations are made without guarantee on part of Taming Lightning and affiliates. Taming Lightning and affiliates disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. This episode is sponsored by the Pittsburgh Foundation and the Heinz Endowment in reception of the Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh grant and residency hosted by the Pittsburgh Glass Center. The city of Pittsburgh is known for its rich contributions to the canon of black cultural creativity. Cultural experience and creative innovations have always reflected the expressions and imaginations of people from the African diaspora. The Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh program is where access and opportunity connect with the Pittsburgh artists who are thriving in their creative process as a means and a way of life. Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh is a joint grant-making program created and managed through the partnership between the Pittsburgh Foundation and the Heinz Endowments. The program is committed to helping create a vibrant cultural life in Pittsburgh and the region. Taming Lightning is supported by the Pittsburgh Glass Center, who encouraged my exploration, research, and development of a space for plasma and neon sculpture. The Pittsburgh Glass Center is a nonprofit, public access school, gallery, and state of the art glass studio dedicated to teaching, creating, and promoting glass art. World renowned artists come from all over to make glass art. People interested in learning more about glass come here to take classes, explore contemporary art gallery, and watch live glass demonstrations. As one of the top glass art centers in the world, we pride ourselves on providing exceptional resources and instruction to expand the skills and knowledge of our students and artists. We strive to foster a new generation of glass artists and enthusiasts here in the Pittsburgh region. The Pittsburgh Glass Center is an important arts organization in Pittsburgh that is helping the city connect its history as a major producer in glass to its creative future through the innovative use of glass as art. Glass art. We teach it, we create it, we promote it. We support those who make it. If you're interested in plasma and want to get hands-on experience with this unique medium, I will be teaching two classes at PGC this summer along with Ed Kirshner and Pat Collentine. From June 22nd to the 26th of 2020, Ed and myself will run the Plasma Vessels Using Glass Solder class, where you can learn how to use the unique soldering technique to repurpose existing glass objects into beautiful plasma artworks. This class is open to all skill levels, from beginner to expert. And from August 3rd through the 7th, with Pat, we will be teaching the class It's All About the Light, a class for beginners exploring and expanding ways to make vessels for plasma in the hot shop. A quick update on the workshops offered at Pittsburgh Glass Center this summer. Currently, the Ed Kirshner class, Plasma Vessels Using Glass Solder, is full, and the Hot Shop class, It's All About the Light, has five seats remaining. At the release of this episode, some workshops are still set to run, and you may still register for those classes. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, there are bound to be new updates as things progress. With this in mind, please hold off on booking your flights and hotels, and keep your eyes peeled for updates by visiting the website. For more information, please check us out on the web at www.pittsburghglasscenter.org or call our studio at 412-365-2145. Taming Lightning is affiliated with the Plasma Art Alliance, which formed in 2017 during the exhibition The Art of Plasma at MONA, the Museum of Neon Art. Their mission is to promote the illuminated plasma in glass as a sculptural art medium foster public awareness for this art form through exhibitions, conferences, and educational outreach, and support the exchange of information related to techniques and technologies essential to the advancement of the field. PAA will serve the growing interest in this evolving art for the mutual benefit of artists, enthusiasts, and patrons. If you're interested or would like to join, you can find them on the web at www.plasmaartalliance.com. I'd like to mention a support option for Taming Lightning, which is coffee. 
That's ko-fi.com slash taminglightning. With this, you're basically donating or giving a tip at the cost of a $3 cup of coffee based on how you think I'm doing, and if you like the project, it's nice to support it. Your donation goes directly to the podcast for means of assisting with audio equipment upgrades, billing or hosting, software and services used in processing the audio, and future travel and professional content. You are by no means obligated to donate, but any support, including commenting and sharing, is appreciated. Welcome back or welcome to the Taming Lightning Podcast. I'm Percy Eccles II. I'm the creator and host of Taming Lightning, as well as the Emerging Plasma Tech at Pittsburgh Glass Center. Taming Lightning Podcast features a series of conversations to help expand our understanding of plasma and neon light, looking beyond its associations with novelty and sign making, and to explore the potential for noble gases as an artistic medium. The intro is Boost by Joachim Karud. Joachim is a Swedish artist who loves to produce chill and happy music and does so for copyright free use. Be sure to support his music by giving credit when used, subscribing, and or by donation. You can find him on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Hello, Lightning Tamers. This is episode number 25. In today's podcast, I'll be introducing Bruce Suba, Scientific Glass, Neon, and Plasma. Now, Bruce and I have been in conversation for over a year or so. We met in person last year at the Plasma Parlay hosted by Glass, the Neon Art Studio in Raleigh, North Carolina. This was recorded towards the end of my trip to the Bay Area in January, where in addition to visiting, I was doing some technical consultation on the behalf of Half Moon Bay Art Glass regarding acquired neon equipment, and thus later passing that along for additional modification and repairs by Bruce. In addition to Mr. Suba's background, we'll be hearing some much-needed wisdom in pursuit of plasma, the need to learn as much as you can, the importance of connecting with communities such as the ASGS, the American Scientific Glass Blowing Society, and other tidbits. Now, before we get into the actual episode, I'd like to give a fair warning that this episode does contain some language, so if you have young children that you don't want to hear certain things, um, I do apologize for having that in there, and I do apologize for my own language as well as my guest, uh, but I try not to limit my guests of their free to express. It's not anything horrible. They're just a few curse words. So if you do have young children, be aware that there will be some foul language in this episode. Thank you. All right, boss, you start. All right, we're at the house of Suba, Mr. Bruce Suba. Uh, been traveling here to California, meeting a lot of different people, meeting up with Ed, uh, meeting up with uh, Cork Marcheski, Marcheski, if I'm pronouncing his name right. And I'm here with Bruce Suba at his place. Um, how you doing, Bruce? I'm fine. It's good to see you, Percy. Yeah, we, we met uh, in person at the uh, Raleigh Plasma Parlay. Is that correct? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was a good time. <laughs> the, really? the vacuum pump didn't work, nothing worked, but we learned how to fix things, and that was excellent. It was yeah. a good class. It, it taught people that even though you have the system, nothing runs perfectly, and you have to see what that means and you had to wrong. yes and you had to learn what it takes to figure it out not every yeah. day is disneyland and that wasn't a disneyland day and we figured it <laughs> out and then we made it work and then everybody had a great time yeah yeah it was good i enjoyed it i enjoyed it that it didn't work so you did learn yeah because everybody yeah. if you didn't have if you didn't have that happen and i went and you went home and you didn't work at your place and you couldn't figure out how to fix it so i, I consider you as a, a triple threat in terms of uh someone working in glass and multitudes of processes, but uh, known for scientific glass, known for neon, and, and known for your explorations and proficiencies in plasma. Um, where is that good or bad? Is that like a triple X movie or something? No, it's oh. like it's a good thing. It's <laughs> definitely a good thing. It means that if you're gonna, someone's gonna go to you, you have knowledge that is very um, broad, but also very specialized. That 
you you cover the basis of everything we wanted to kind of talk about just getting into something mm-hmm. uh, because of that experience because through neon you have the understanding of that what needs to happen for a really clean vacuum for the neon you have you for that you can speak on plasma interchangeably and know what you need for neon what you need for plasma and know the differences and with scientific glass you can fix your own shit yeah and you can figure out how people need to do the fix their own shit and teach them to do it themselves the more you learn the better off you are the, you, the more knowledge you have the bigger bucket of skills you have the more chance you'll always have work and you'll be self-reliant because there's not enough people like us around anymore even like scientific glass blowers some uh, if you have a pyrex manifold and you learn how to m- work pyrex you could fix it yourself otherwise you'd have to find a scientific glass blower and they're dying yeah. And there's not a lot of them. And, and pipe makers are great and groovy, but not all of them have the precision that a scientific glass blower has that you need on that manifold. There's a whole different ball game, unless you're lucky to find someone that does. So if you learn it yourself and something breaks, you don't, you're not down for a month or a week or whatever. You can get back into, back into the swing of things in a heartbeat. Learn everything you can. I learned soft glass, Pyrex, quartz, non-X. So when somebody threw something at me, I could always do the job. I didn't say no. So where did you begin when it came to glass? Um, I moved up from L.A. out of high school in 77 up to Santa Cruz, and I found a guy doing stained glass. And I worked for him for two years for free as an apprentice, making stained glass windows, cutting the glass, letting it, waterproofing it, the whole yards, helping with the installation. And outside of his shop was a guy named David Ruth who uh, was making sheets of hand-rolled stained glass and crazy colors that no one else was doing, different textures. So he found somebody with a pile of money and he wanted a shop. So I ended up working for him. I built all the furnaces, the ovens, everything we had. We made 60 sheets of stained glass a day. We were the first company to use a computer for running the furnaces, for controlling the temperature at night and stuff like that. We had, um, we took, we were the first people to take recycled clear glass, crush it, add chemicals to it for different colors. And then we had three separate furnaces and different color in each one. We take a scoop of each one, put it in one furnace, scoop it out. And we had a rolling machine. We rolled out sheets of stained glass and we did that for years. And then every Sunday was free day. So I'd be there blowing glass off a blowpipe making whatever I could figure out how to do and do that. And that lasted about five years and it went out of business. And while I was there, um, somebody said, you ought to get into neon. And I always was amazed by light since I was a kid. So I found somebody to teach me neon in town. And I took a class from him every Tuesday and Thursday for four hours. And after a year, I bought all his equipment and um, my life's been hell ever since. <laughs> so, so you did neon before you started doing the scientific work. How yeah. did you get into the scientific stuff? Um, well, I had a, I was looking at going to school, and I was going to go to Orfor School in Sweden. And I looked into it, and my mom was going to pay for the schooling, but there was no work there to pay for the living expenses and stuff mm-hmm. like that, so I didn't go. And I'm kind of glad I didn't, because when the economy crashed, nobody buys art anymore. Yes. So um, I just put my nose to the grindstone, and I said, I always loved the, the condenser tubes inside of another thing inside of another thing. I'm like, like after learning neon and doing soft glass, I was like, how did they do that and it not break? That was magic to me. So I got into scientific glass. My first job for scientific was cathode ray tubes. I made those for years. For probably, I think I did work there for four or five years making those. And then I get left there and I made lasers for about three years. And I left there and I got into metal halide lights and laser flash lamps. And I worked there for about four years. And then I got into x-ray tubes and that's what I'm still currently doing today is making x-ray tubes. I do all the glass, the metal seals, the glass, the glass seals. I've been there for 30 years, running the pumps, the hydrogen furnaces, the ovens, the chemical room, all the acid etchings, everything like that. Um, I've estimated I've made maybe two or three million glass to metal seals in 30 years all by hand. Mm. And um, yeah, and then in between doing that, doing the neon for myself and at my house and ever for people who want to spend the money to do it right that want to do a quality job otherwise i don't want to do the work i don't care yeah you know yeah. people people call me like hey i got a beer sign and it's broken i go well don't tell me don't tell me you got it for free and yeah how'd you know i go because that guy didn't want to throw it away now you have to throw it away and i go i don't want to fix it i don't waste my time <laughs> on beer science it's not worth the time i want to do fun things crazy things that no one else did um i met larry albright in 1983 worked on a project together over in cupertino at a bar that they spent a million and a half bucks on that neon lasers 
cast glass, slump glass, press tin. It was all about the Industrial Revolution. And I met him, and when I saw his stuff, I'd go down to L.A. as much as I could and hang out with him and apprentice with him, and he taught me a bunch of stuff. And he said, it's your problem now, so good luck. <laughs> I said, thanks. So, and um, it just went off the deep end ever since. Yeah, yeah. So with that, you know, is there any particular people you say are very influential in your, your growth as a, as, an, as a maker, artist, Larry was Larry was huge. He's you know he's like one of the first guys to make the crazy stuff, miniature neon, all kinds of things, like the special effects and stuff like that. Mundy's way up there. He's got to be the most psychedelic plasma artist that I love. His colors are he's the king of psychedelica in plasma art. He's got everybody else whooped. He's just he's great. I love him. He's he's um, he's the best. Um, those two people are the best that I that I think of. They're great. And then Mike and Ann, he's great. He's a great scientific glass bar. Those people are, you know, they're great. I'm glad I'm friends with them. I'm lucky. Uh, do you have a strong involvement in the American Scientific Glass? Yeah, I've been a member of the Scientific Glass Blowing Society for 23 years now. And I've been running the meetings in Northern California for, God, at least 20 years. And we have two of them a year at different shops. And we get people from anybody that does any kind of glass can come. We don't there's no discrimination in the situation. You can be neon, stained glass, blown glass, whatever. Come and learn. Everybody has something to share. There's no wrong way. There's no right way. There's always another way to do something. And I want always people to learn that and get it out. And so we can always share all this stuff because when all the old guys are gone, someone's still got to do this stuff. A robot can't take over everything. Sorry. Yeah. No matter how bad you want it to happen. <laughs> and with that, we'll kind of transition into more of the plasma-related questions. Yeah. Um, when it comes to doing things like plasma, you stated that uh, patience is very important. And I, I like to say patience is the lifeblood of success. Um, so what skills do you recommend for a strong proficiency when it comes to working with plasma? Well, you said it, the key word, patience. Um, like lo a lot of people want to get it done and over with really quick. Uh, my bake-out process, what Larry taught me, is like, well, you've made this big piece of glass with a lot of work into it. Bake it out overnight in the oven while you're sleeping. Who cares? The oven isn't going to go anywhere. It's not going to burn the building down. It didn't burn the building down during the day when you were down there. So yeah, I hook everything up and I get it going and I let it pump and bake out overnight while I'm sleeping. And the next morning I wake up and I go out to the shop and I start playing with it and filling it and and you take your time. There's no rush. You you know everybody's in such a hurry to do everything nowadays. The more time I take. I slow down and really think about what I'm doing, calculated ideas, why I'm doing this, to make things better, longer lasting. Um, I met somebody who wants to help me make better plasma tubes that last longer, cleaner tubes. So I've got some ideas, I'm gonna work with him on how to make them better and cleaner, mm -hmm. get more impurities out of it. Can't I, I just into quality I'm from that old school generation. I want things to last. I don't wanna buy, consume, and dispose this item. I'm pretty sick of that nowadays. Yeah, It's like, it's not life. It's not what it's <laughs> supposed to be. Yeah, so that takes that takes work, and, and not a lot of people are willing to do that. Well, they're the one that's going to miss out. Yeah, yeah you, to to tackle on that whole thing about work, I mean, you have to, in order to do the thing that seems to be a lot of work or hard work, you got to have, you got to have a reason to do it. Yeah. If you don't know what you want to do and don't have a drive for something, you're not going to follow through for that hard work. You're right. You got to have passion and desire. And when you have passion, then you'll you'll conquer anything. Be it like at work, they want me to teach somebody to do scientific glassing. I go, don't want to waste my time. I go, they don't want telling somebody to want to do it is not how one someone wants to do it. They have to live on it. They have to do it every day for 20 years and eat it, live it, and breathe it. I go, I go an example is look at Eric Clapton. He learned to play the guitar because he wanted to learn it, not because someone told him to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's so great. And I go, people that are good paid their dues and no one wants to pay their dues. I go, nothing quick is good. Look at Taco Bell. It's not good. <laughs> um, so when it comes to getting yourself ready to do this stuff for pumping and working with Neon, you, you need to have a system. So a lot of people have a lot of different ways they build their system. If you're starting out, you wanna be able to first make it efficient, you wanna also make it cost effective. So what are the bare bones necessity for building your, your vacuum pump system, which includes your manifold? Well, the best thing the, the best thing I've seen on the market that I bought two of was the Deco Neon manifold, all out of glass. One, it's glass, so you don't, you, have, you risk your chance of getting electrocuted when you're doing neon. Um, two, you can take it apart and clean it and put it back together in a day. And uh, 
if they would have had that 40 years ago, I would have more hair on my head. I wouldn't be pulling it out because we had the old ground stop cocks back in the day. And my shop was up in the hills where it get really hot and really cold. And the, and the stop cock looked like it had grease in it, but it did. But at a certain point, it melted out and it would leak. So the only way to fix it is pull out the stopcock and lose the glass flask and you lost all that glass. So it was a royal nightmare for a long, long time. And then and then when I got the money, I saw the Daco thing. I bought two of those systems. It's simple. You don't need, um, the best thing about it is the, the gas transfer system with the Robbins valves. You can buy those for like 75 bucks for a brass one. They don't need to be stainless steel. You don't need to go to Ferrari on this. We're just using inert gases. Um, that with the gas transfer system with the copper tubing and the gauge, you can save your money on regulators. You don't need a regulator. That's, you know, those are hundreds of dollars. You can save hundreds of dollars on that. And it's just so simple. It's basic. You're just putting gas in and out and laying ladling it in with the needle valve is perfect the only thing if the needle valve is you have to have a little bit of what they call liberace hands you have to be really light on them if you tighten too tight you snap the needle off in the bottom and then it's gone yeah and and you learn by your mistakes you just if you're a little bit more ca- cautious on it it's better than being aggressive on any of that and with anything on glass you don't want to be aggressive you want to have liberace hands you want to be light delicate and then things will last you forever it's it's a great system that with a 1402 welsh pump that's a, a good one get it rebuilt and a molecular sieve full of stainless steel wool you're you're good to go you have nothing to worry about my, my system works i go in the shop in the morning i turn it on and it works i don't have to fix anything mm-hmm. every time you have to go fix something you're losing time and i was taught when about neon everything is try to be as close as you can my glass is down below my my bench so i pull it out and i'm bending glass right away my burners are right behind me i'm efficient i'm always trying to make you're trying to make money, you're trying to bend glass, you're trying to be efficient in the situation. Same with the pumping system. Don't leave it alone. Once a year, I take it all apart, I put new O-rings in it, I clean it all up, I put it back together, I change the oil in the pump every couple months because I don't do neon every day. If you did neon every day, I'd change it maybe every month. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it, and the pump will last you a good 30 years, no problem. The system should last you indefinitely. As long as you don't break it, mm-hmm. it's the simpler the better. I've, had, I've worked on turbo pumps, diffusion pumps, all that stuff. Sometimes less is more. Um, especially for neon, you know, some people want a turbo pump on it. it. That's that's way too too much for the neon system. It doesn't need that type of a vacuum because you're back filling it with a gas. You just want to make sure when you're bombarding it to get all the water out of the tube while you're bombarding it and get those electrodes cherry hot to make sure you convert those the emissions inside of it. And then you're good to go. You you can make tubes. I have one sign in town that's been on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's been 42 years. Where do you make? Where do you really buy anything that makes that lasts so long anymore? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Is there? So we're talking about the manifold here. Glass is good because of that ability to clean it, and if it does get busted, you can repair it. Yeah, metal manifolds are great if. The only thing I don't like about metal ones is electrocution when it comes to neon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you need to know how to work on them. They have a knife edge, and you have to use a copper gasket on it. And all that has to be is everything has to be super clean on them. And we have them at work. We also use you got to wear gloves when you put them all together. You don't want any oil impurities in it. Uh, also, the um, inside of the tube. Sometimes we have them electro polished the manifolds to make them even cleaner. Mm. And then we put heat tape on them to bake them out because they hold water too everything holds water and so we put heat tape on the on the manifolds while we're baking out the x-ray tubes while they're in the oven so everything is just puking out and the pump is sucking it all up because you want to get the water which turns into hydrogen and that's what kills your your tube Mm. anything any hydrogen will kill your tube so i'm not a fan of metal ones we use them at work for super high vacuum because we're going down to the tenth scale for neon you don't need to go down to the tenth scale because you're back filling it with a gas Mm -hmm. and then because you can't really, in the case that you can't find a Daco, you can have that built very yeah, simply. Yeah, you find somebody who's a, gla- a good glass bar that can have you build someone. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, you can buy all the parts. So I can tell you all the companies to buy all the parts. All my friends are, I met them all through the ASGS. They're the greatest people in the world. Go to one of their meetings, join up. It's a measly $100 a year. They have a chat site. You can ask the stupid questions and you'll get a hundred different answers of what the right way, the wrong way. And it's been a help. And, and just the people connecting with them, helping me find equipment and doing things has been priceless. Without them, I wouldn't have gotten as far as I've gotten. Yeah, in regards to vacuum as well, like, for me, one of the most useful books is Varian's Basic Vacuum Practice. It's a Bible. Which you can, if you could find the physical copy, awesome. But there is yeah. a free online version on, uh, on that you can purchase. I'm uh, not purchase, but you can download. Um, it's a light read. Yeah. You know, we have to read a couple chapters, like how's vacuum work, what is vacuum, about 
roughing pumps and molecular sieve if you're interested in that and maybe a diffusion pump if you're interested in that and there's a couple there's a whole bunch of troubleshooting there too that's great you yeah. can't beat that you know, just gotta gotta want to do the work i guess that's it you want to <laughs> you got to have that passion and chase that knowledge to find what you want i was working on a project this guy had an antique uh it wasn't a nixie light it was kind of a nixie light light bulb and it had a silhouette of a woman in it and he bought it and it lasted about a year and it and he took it to a neon guy and the guy hit it with a torch and he grenaded it because he didn't know it wasn't annealed and so he brought it to me and it took me four years to rebuild it i had to find the stems and the stems were a four lead stem and china said well you have to buy fifty thousand of them and i said well, i only need one and then the tubing the size i needed china says we well, need to buy a ton and i only needed a foot so i did everything out of pyrex and i had to find a stem press machine for the, my lathe that worked to do the operation and then i finally found it after through the asgs and talking to enough people and doing the right thing and being a pest and i finally found everything i needed and i made the stems i put the light bulb together i pumped it and gave it to the guy and the guy was stoked and he got it working again but it, that's what it took chasing it down chasing down uh technology that's 100 years old mm -hmm. that still works today <laughs> um so when it comes to getting, you got your setup. So say you got your setup. What gases are we looking at, especially for people who are looking for doing plasma? Or what gases would you recommend starting out with? I would recommend them buying flasks of glass from West Coast Customs because it's not expensive. You can buy neon, argon, krypton, and xenon, and it's cheaper than buying tanks. If you're going to go into it, go buy tanks. You can make sure you get the 580 fitting on it because that's universal and then you don't and you can hook that up to the gas transfer system really easily but if you buy flash you can buy all the gases and you can afford it where the big tanks of xenon are, are some pretty big money and people don't have the money if they're just playing around with this stuff it's the best way to go when you start and and once you get that then you're good to go and 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 play a little bit let let the least gas you put in it, the easier it is to make it to glow. The more gas you put in it, the more energy it takes to light it up. And it's kind of the rule of the game. Then mixing them and trying to, having the right equipment to measure the amount and things like that is next down the line. You're going to have to spend some money to play, but that's what it takes to do it right. Otherwise, you're just guessing. When you're trying to play around a new mixture, are there things that you're looking at to know if you've matched things up with your your, your power supply or transformer versus like your lamp or are you, are you just looking purely at the effects? I'm just going for the effects. I'm not worried about the other stuff. Um, I just want psychedelica, big time. The, yeah. the, you know, when it, when something, <laughs> when so, but it doesn't always work. You know, there's some days that sometimes it works. Uh, one of the things Larry told me is the hardest part is knowing when to say when. He said, you put a little gas and it does nothing. You put more gas and it does nothing. Put some more gas and it's starting to glow. A little bit more, it's kind of cool. You put add a little bit different gas, it's kind of cool. A little bit more, wow, it's kind of bitching, it's starting to do something. A little bit more, wow, it's really cool. A little bit more, it's totally bitching. And you add a little bit more and it goes blah, right on its face and you're dead. Now it does nothing. So you can suck all that out and start all over again and try to remember what you did. And that's the hardest part is knowing when to say when. Mm -hmm. It could look great. And you said, should I add more or should I stop? You know, now I've learned that I got older, it's easier to stop because it's all about time. So yeah. I'd rather be stopped and happy with that. And I make sure you take notes. There's a difference between science and fucking around is science you write it down so write everything down get yourself a little spongebob notebook i got one works <laughs> like a charm pencils work even when the power goes out and write down what you're doing take a picture of it put a picture with it so you remember what you're making and how you did it and, and if you want to do the same thing over and over again try to be consistent in what you do every every step of what you do clean the glass um anneal it um when you make sure you induction heat the electrodes because everything has a reason to do what you do you want to if you want to be consistent and that's what you have to do. everything you have you do every step every time the same otherwise you cannot reproduce it if that's what you're trying to do so you've been very helpful with my me working with douglas and getting that manifold all cleaned up it gave me pretty simple steps uh, so if you're cleaning a a piece are you cleaning it before you put the electrode on it or are you doing it after the electrode like you're doing your like final rinse and before you bake it out? Is um, I clean all my glass before I build anything. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then I make sure it's hot while I'm working it because any water spots will stain it. So after I build the whole, I clean it all, build all the whole piece on the lathe or whatever, the hand torch, whatever I'm doing, then I'll anneal it and that'll be pretty clean. As clean as it's gonna get. When, it, when you bake out something to 100, 
1050 degrees Fahrenheit, then you've burned everything out of it. Then you can hook it up to your vacuum system and then start filling the gas. Or if you want to add phosphorus, now the time to do is that mm. after you can do the, I do the suck method where I hook up a little valve to it and pull a vacuum on it and I have a little dish with phosphor and I open the valve real quick and it sucks the phosphor and it makes a nice little dusting inside where it's not, it's not overwhelming, it's not cakey and funky, and it's just a light little dust that gives it a little different color when you add a different gas to it. It's a little bit of magic to it and stuff like that. And then you just hook it up to the manifold system, bake it out overnight, and next morning start filling it and cross your fingers and hope you remember what you did last time. Look at those <laughs> notes, kids, and um, let the magic begin. And just, it just it's the thing I wanna do next is different shapes. It's all about the shape and how to divert the gas and where it's going and things like that. And just playing more with the glass to get crazier shapes, to get different diversions in the gas, to make it do different things. We don't even know yet. We're just touching the tip of the iceberg with everybody's power supplies and their shapes and all that stuff. It's, it's a big open world that a lot more to learn. I have a lot more to learn too. In your pre-cleaning process, which also will go with uh, someone cleaning their manifold, if they get oil or something like that, uh, what do you recommend as your steps for cleaning that glass? Um, anybody can do it. Go buy some Dawn dishwashing soap. It's the best stuff the public can buy. And just a little bit in there. A lot is not good because that takes more energy to get the soap out. Soap, soap is a water wetter and makes the water wetter and helps loosen all the stuff in it. Hot water and, and Dawn soap. If you have an ultrasonic tank, that's great. Buy one. Put it in that. Let it do all the work. Then when let it sit in there for five minutes, dump that out, rinse it out with some water, and then put in some deionized water. You can buy that at the supermarket. Let that sit in there for at least five minutes with the DI water. If you have acetone, that would be great. You could dump out the water, put some acetone in the ultrasonic in the in the part, and let it sit in there for five minutes. That'll remove all any oils or greases out of it. Dump that out and put some isopropyl alcohol. Try to get, they make a 70 and a 90% isopropyl. Try to get the 90% because that's less water in it. Let it sit in there for five minutes and take it out. And if you have some way to dry the piece, like um, you don't want to use compressed air because there's oil and water in that, like a uh, some type of force blower off your neon pump or something like that that's just blowing air through there to dry it out. And if you have an oven, put it in the oven and bake it out. Run it up to 750 degrees or even if it's Pyrex and run it through the kneeling cycle. That'll burn everything out. Then it's sterile. Then the next day you can put it together. Wear gloves. A little bit of va uh, the Apazon vacuum grease on some of the pieces doesn't hurt. And you're good to go. Put it back together. Let it pump down. And you'll be back in business in a day. Yeah. Some people will think about that and say, oh, that's a lot of work to do. But that tedium is part of the quality. You're trying to make that consistent environment as clean as possible. It has to be. Uh, for people that have pieces that they have electrode on, they know it. Can, they did a test on it, it can pump, but they didn't pump it maybe a couple of weeks later. Will a bake out work fine for that, or do they have to do some kind of rinsing? For which piece again? So, if I had like a soft glass piece yeah. and I didn't I had it sitting on the shelf for like a month, but I didn't, it, you know, what would I do for cleaning that out? You'd have to crack the electrode out and pour some DI water in there or something or shake it around and, and dump it out and pour some alcohol to get the DI water out of there and blow it out and run it back to the kneading oven to burn all the crap out of it that you just cleaned it with. You cleaned it with something, mm -hmm. but then you left residue of something in there. So you want to burn that out of there so it's sterile. Like I said, you run it to a kneading temperature, it's all burned out. And then you put your electro back on it, put it back together. So in the case of that, just want to make sure that you cap that thing off the second it comes out and nearly if you're not going to pump it then. exactly just yeah. just seal it off with a, with a long tip off it doesn't even be under vacuum or nothing just close it off so nothing gets inside of it um i had a company call me a x-ray tube company varian in in salt lake city and they were wondering why their glass and metal seals were all bubbly and so we sat down for an hour and we talked about the whole thing i go so when you do these parts where do you put the parts do you put them in a tray and put them in a nitrogen box no we just let them sit outside I go, well, all the dust and the dirt from the air is falling on them, and that's what you're burning on, and that's what you're sealing on. And so you just polluted everything that you made, so now nothing works. So you need to, every time you make something like that, you want to keep it as clean as possible until you're going to glass the piece and put it together. Mm -hmm. And so they learned the hard way. So they had to re-clean everything, refire everything, and then they did all that, and they called me and said, it works. I said, well, it's just an observation. Cleanliness is next to high fidelity. <laughs> all right. So I do have a question down here about the step-by-step. -step. I think we pretty much covered most of that. Mm -hmm. um, you make sure your glass is clean. You make the work. You hook no it leaks. Up. Vacuum tight leaks. 
vacuum type yeah, seals. Was... I'm sorry. Everybody senses their great glass blower until it has to be vacuum tight. Then they learn that there's a pinhole they'll find somewhere and, and make sure all your little points, when you pull them to a point that you round off those points because you're pulling tubing and there's a little hole down the middle and you pull it to a point, there's still a little tiny hole that can be through it. So go back with a torch and round that point off. So it's just, it doesn't have to be sharp. Just make it round. Then you'll seal off that point. You won't have any vacuum leaks because that's what people send me pieces and that's where the majority I find are little tiny micro leaks at the end of points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very difficult thing to explain to people. Yes. And most people don't believe it when you say it. Like, yes. Oh, it's like a fairy or the, or the Santa Claus type of deal. But it, it's, it's something that's going to be a big pain in your butt anyways. And if you have a means to even just test out yourself. You don't even need a uh, – if you don't have a manifold yourself, can you use like a general refrigerant pump to get the pump down? Sure, why not? Anything and that you can go buy a, a yeah. pump from Harbor Freight for fifty bucks and yeah. hook it up to that, and then but you need a spark checker though. Yeah, once you have the spark checker. And yeah. so some people, there those are about three hundred fifty bucks, and the same company makes them, and um, you could send them off for repair, but it's cheaper to just to buy another one. Um, some people are playing; they make these uh, violet ray wands on eBay, and they're like fifty bucks. And some people have converted them over to make a, a cheap one, and it kind of works, but you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. But you know, certain, there's certain things that you just have to spend the money on, like the Welsh fourteen hundred two pump. Spend the money, buy the good pump. You never think about it. The, the spark checker. Buy the spark checker. It's mm -hmm. an investment. But if you're going to do this for a long time, you'll never have to buy another one, as long as you take care mm -hmm. of all your stuff. Don't abuse it, and you'll be fine. It'll last you many, many, many years. Yeah, this is a interesting field where the game is changing constantly. You got, I, 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 I like to talk about it like this because in the current state, there's a hierarchy, right, of what's available. The most available thing you can learn is about vacuum and learn how to blow glass. The next step is the availability of people to pump for you and the institution. There's no institution, no school for plasma. There are people that do it. And when you're ready to send that stuff out there, you have to know whether it has a vacuum or not, whether it has a leak or not. The best thing is to send that without a leak because you get it there and they can't fix it because it's soft glass. That's right. You're screwed. That's right. And I've been trying to say this a bit a few times. What It's about making a batch of things. Don't just make that one off and say, okay, I'm done making the thing. Make a whole bunch of those. Repetition. Because not only does repetition give you more confidence uh, in what confidence, you're doing, yeah. you'll do better glass blowing. And then if you send it, you're not just sending one. It's like, oh, you just wasted shipping. You wasted yeah. their time. Maybe yeah, I had this lady set, sent me a heart, and, and I found 12 leaks in it. And she, I sent her an email back. I found 12 leaks. She's like flipped out. I go, don't, don't get mad. I go, you've never done vacuum-tight glass bongs. It's a different thing. I go, everybody can make pipes and bongs and art pieces. But when you pull a vacuum on it, the, the micronest, smallest little holes will, will come out of it. And it only comes out under vacuum. I go, fix them all. It's all good. We don't worry about it. And I filled a piece and sent it to her, and she was happier than a clamp. Couldn't mm -hmm. ask her anymore. So everybody's a great glass blower until you put it under back, and we all <laughs> suck. Then we learned the hard way. You got to go back and fix everything that you thought you were great at, and then you just a lot more patience. Slow down. There's no rush. Make that weld a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Well, make it flow. Make it all disappear. Make the seam disappear so you don't have any leaks. If there's any bubbles, pick out the bubbles. It might be a, a weak, weak spot in the situation. All the glass work I do for the x-ray tubes all has to be perfect. There can be no air bubbles or anything. It has to be within five thousandths of an inch. Otherwise, it won't fly for what their calculations are to, to be to make it work. So here's a kind of off, another off-the-cuff question. Um, in terms of plasma, do you see the future of plasma being a particular type of glass? Some people are saying that, you know, while they love soft glass, they think that for the consistency or the ability to get the most bang out of your buck with plasma, boro is kind of the way. You know, if you... you if you're going to do soft glass, you got to be really good at what you're doing. You don't have the um, versatility that Pyrex does. Pyrex, you can shove it in the flame and work it and throw it on the table and, and it not break. Where the soft glass, you got to be all in and get it all done while you're hot. Or if you have a garage, you can put it in the garage for whatever amount of time and go back and work on it again. But soft glass, it's, it's all in and you have to finish it like that day. And to go back and forth to work on it, it's a royal pain in the butt to bring it up to temperature from cold. Where the Pyrex is, is like working concrete. You could just go in there and goof on it as much as you want that day, toss in the oven, let it cool down, bring it back up real quick because the, the Pyrex will take the abuse of the torch and and today now with pyrex they have more colors than ever i mean when i started we had your choice of three colors you had clear 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 now there's hundreds of colors out there they're not all bulletproof yet because they're not 
they have compatibility problems still and some of them you have to case with clear because they mud out when the, with the type of flame that you use and stuff like that um there's all kinds of things you can put together it's glow bars now that you can get for the soft class that are uv but they also are making those for pyrex now so the, the the palette is huge on both realms now it's just up to you and your abilities and what you mix together and how you trip out on the glass or mix the colors together with the gases and stuff like that you can make some phenomenal things today i have i have ideas i haven't even thought of yet <laughs> <laughs> well, i appreciate your time mr bruce it's uh, always a pleasure love uh getting to see your place and got to meet your wife here today and all that stuff that was really cool i'm uh, glad you're here i hope you're to, always welcome to come back through in the future here you have uh, to any, any closing uh notations for our guests or for our audience <laughs> um just patience spend the money buy the right thing so you don't have to go backwards in life it's all about time and if you don't have it save up for it and buy that right tool so you can always go forward and not go backwards man going backwards is just a waste of time and that's all you got in your life and join the asgs it's the best thing i've ever done because the people that help me they, they have a symposium once a year this year it's going to be in florida and it costs about 500 bucks to get into the thing but they'll teach you anything you want and you'll meet all the vendors there and you can't beat that the people are, are wonderful wonderful and uh one last note here are you welcome for people to contact you if they have questions or sure get a hold of me my email i'm on facebook instagram send money that's always good <laughs> and um yeah i'll help you in any way i can it's, it's up to you and your passion and desire how far you want to go with it you know percy you're great you, you're doing everything you can you're learning every learn as much as you can you know, that's what I did. I sucked it up in Santa Cruz when I started 40 some years ago. There were there were 30 glass shops here, and I worked at everybody's shop to learn everything I could, from acid etching to engraving, sandblasting, slumping, fusing, silvering, making the glass from scratch. We made our own glass with batch and everything like that. I learned everything I could, so I knew what I was doing and what my limitations were. And learn as much as you can when you're with somebody that's teaching you something. Sweep the floor, whatever it takes to learn it is what it's going to take. Get that knowledge. Um, we had a glass mowing meeting last year. I had a friend of mine shop and I was talking about devitrification in glass. And then when this old guy is 80 years old, Oliver, he's great. And I go, dude, I'm having this problem with devitrification. I go, how do you get rid of it? And he goes, oh, I take paper and I soak it in salt water and I let it dry out. And then I wrap the glass in it and I heat it up really slowly and it re-impregnates the salt back into the glass. I go, dude, I got books up to wazoo on glass blowing. None of them say that. I go, so the ASGS is great and knowing these people I can fix my problem that I would never ever figure it out. Somebody else who, who was old and dilly dallied around, played with it, fixed the problem and it helped me so I can help you. And it, just keep this going because it, it'll make your life easier. The more you learn, the more your life will be easier. The more people you know in this situation, the more your life will be easier. When you, something breaks, you need something, somebody might have an extra one that they could send to you right away or something like that. The more people you know, the better off you are. Don't be afraid to reach out to ask somebody for some help. All right, thank you. Anytime. The outro is The Process by Lakey Inspire. Jordan, a.k.a. Lakey, is a Los Angeles-based artist with the goal to inspire others to create by sharing positive music around the world. Thus, he works hard to produce music every week for copyright-free use. Be sure to support his music by giving credit when used, subscribing, and or by donation via Patreon. You can find him on Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Thank you for listening to the Tammy Lightning Podcast. I'd like to thank Bruce Huber for taking the time to record, his continued support and wisdom, and being a friend and mentor in glass and life. I encourage you to give him a call. He's always willing to help in any way he can. Also, I'd like to thank the Pittsburgh Glass Center for supporting me as a place of research and inspiration, as well as encouraging me to pursue this project and the Plasma Art Alliance, where I have an access to a well of knowledge and connects me to some amazing people. Last but not least, this trip was made possible through the support of the Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh grant provided by the Pittsburgh Foundation and the Heinz Endowment. If you'd like to support Taming Lightning, subscribe to the newsletter on www.taminglightning.net or follow on Instagram at Taming Lightning. Other options for support are donations through coffee, spelled ko-fi.com, slash Taming Lightning where you can donate for the price of a $3 cup of coffee. Links will be provided in the show notes. Feel free to share, comment, and subscribe. And as a final note, be safe, be healthy, and be strong. And I'll see you next time.